Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for this and the outpouring of his tender love and mercy that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I want to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And I'm praying that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. Well, this evening, we're going to present our prayer list and then we will uh, have a guest speaker. So right now, we're going to uh, go to the prayer list. So without any further remarks, let us begin. I'd like to start off with the uh, Jacksons. Alan the Fourth, Titus, Brittany, and Alvante. Also, we want to pray on behalf of Allison and Tony Eastman and Andrew and Ashton East Eastman, Jimmy Parker, Leonard Johnson, Dr. Janice Marshburn, Mr. and Mrs. Luckett, uh, Teresa Hudson and family, also uh, Sister Elaine Pinnell, uh, Larice Williams, Sister Gertrude Tolliver, the Stevensons, Jesse Jr., uh, Anika, uh, Sylvester and Dicey, Jesse Clark, Jessica, Sylvester Jr., Elijah Lewis, and Josiah. And we're also praying on behalf of Denim Peacock. Uh-huh. That one just came back to me, but it'll come to me again. But anyway, um, Elijah Lewis and Josiah, Mary Marshall, we're also praying on behalf of Alan Frazier, Sister Bertha Reed and Christine Aubrey, Sister Maria Wilson, Sister Ethel Jackson, and we're also praying on behalf of Lewis and James Williams, um, Anissa Servant, and also Joyce Holmes and family. We're praying also on behalf of uh, Wilbur Jordan, Pastor Black. Sister Helen Yancey, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Esther Gabriel and Helen Yancey. Uh, Mr. Herbert Lester, we're also praying on behalf of Mr. Eric Mitchell. Uh, John E. Carson and family, Sister Dorothy Lofton, Mrs. Margaret Belton, Sister Edie Parker, the Marks family, and also Sister Margaret Belton. Sister uh, Edie Parker, uh, excuse me, yes, yeah, Edie Parker, the Marks family, Ida B. Rockwell, Brother Eugene Williams, and Sister Tony Germany, Ethel Gary, Sister Trina Josie and family, Ron Throw and family, Brother Keith L. Carson and family, Brother Frank Davis, Brother Robert Bryant, Mrs. Jones. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Brianna Shands and Al and Wendy Cummings, Norma Coker, Dave and Sadie Abraham, Sister Marion S. Harrison, and Sister Gwen Murray and family, and Miss Hicks, the Bellamy family. The Andrews, Dolly, Michael, and Kip Andrews, and we're also praying on behalf of Marilyn Pauley. Ben Evans, and we're also praying on behalf of Shante Wilson, Ronald and Francis, Hannah Mae Parker, uh, Sister Anna L. Moore, and we're also praying on behalf of Brother Gaylord Kelly and family, Sister Crystal Ewell and Marva Dykus. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Maddie Williams and Malachi Ewell, Amber and Amani, Antoinette and Alex, Sister Betty Lou Wright and Sister Mary Jo A.H. Carson. We're also praying on behalf of Mrs. Yvonne Johnson and Sister Patricia Benjamin, Sister Lucille Cox, Dr. Stephanie Pinnell Phillips and family. And we're also praying on behalf of Miss Nicole M Mosley, Sister Davina Watson, Sister Mary Johnson, Sister Thelma Harris, also Trey Stewart and Brother Joe Jackson Sr., Joe Jackson Jr., and Myron Jackson. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Idell Hearns and Brother Woodrow Russell, Sister Grace Ewell, Zemi Champion, Brother Isidore Davis, and Sister Fanny Duran and family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Teresa Bonds, uh, Bozeman and 
Sister Linda Green and family, Sister Edwina. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Matilda Dunn, Sister Annie Riley and family, Sister Shirley Burnell, Mr. Juan Fernando and Mr. Enrique Vallejo, Sister Teresa Wanzo. We're also praying on behalf of Mr. Michael Jones and Sister Odeer. We're praying also on behalf of uh, Charles and Yolanda Stewart, Sister Moselle Lester, e Yvonne Hutchings French, and also Sister Ruby Clifton, Brother Hawkins, Brother Adams, Sister Regina Gilmore, and also Freddie and uh, Sister Mims, Sister Skurlock, Brother Edward Kelly, Flowers Family, Sister Annie B. McGowan, Cynthia Blackshire, John and Monique Deering, Damon and Darnell Tim, Sister Ruthie Blackshire, family and friends, Nikki Sinclair, also Ryan and Natasha, Roy and Carmen. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Patricia Roach, that's Patricia Roach, and uh, Sister Pearl Clay, Sister Robin Cook, Hazel Brown, also uh, Deborah Wade, and we're also praying on behalf of uh, Charles and Devane Stewart, Sister Melody Parker, Sister Cynthia Baumgartner, Mr. Morris Jackson, Sister Lucille Kasuka, Sister Gwen Fight, Sister Wanda McCree and family, Mrs. L Nelda O'Neill. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Trisolina Smith, and uh, we we'll continue to pray on behalf of Sister Ruby Richardson, uh, Sister Betty Hill. We're also praying on behalf of Brother Carol Thornton, and uh, we continue to pray on behalf of the bereaved families at this time. And if there are those who are bereaved and I don't have their names, we're praying that they will be comforted during this time of their bereavement. And uh, it's our prayer that God will continue to give them the strength that they need to carry on and the courage to continue on this time side of life. All right, so that takes care of the prayer list. This evening, our speaker is going to be coming to us from... Berkeley, Illinois, and he was a fill-in speaker at the lectureship in Chicago. So without any further remarks, I'm going to be presenting to you tonight Brother Omar Smith. So without any further remarks, Brother Omar Smith. Good afternoon. Good, mo good morning. My name is Omar Smith. I'm the minister of the West Suburban Church of Christ in Berkeley, Illinois. I am so excited, so excited to be here Delighted to be able to proclaim the word of the Almighty God. Uh, one of my professors at IBC told me that always keep a sermon in your pocket. <laughs> I didn't have one this morning, but I got the word in my heart. All right, all right, all right. Right? And so I am ready to speak on the subject. I believe it is the night shift, if I am correct. Coming from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. I shall not be very long. The Bible says in verse 1 of John chapter 9, And Jesus passed by, and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. One of the things that I love about my Savior is that he always understands my condition. Right, right, right. He knows what my difficulties are. He understands the tribulations that I must endure. He knows my health situation better than I do. And there are times in my life where I don't want to get out of bed. But because of the grace of God, because I understand that he loves me, because there's a word that tells me that I must go out and to teach this gospel of Jesus Christ, he gives me the strength to rise out of my bed and slumber and be able to walk and continue to walk in the newness of life. When I look at this text, I see a man who has a physical condition that uh, makes him limited in his ability. This man is blind, but 
The good news is that Jesus had passed his way. There was a time in my life where I was blind. Yes, I was able to see, but I was still blind because of my spiritual condition. And the Savior, I heard uh, uh, someone teach me the gospel. And they told me that I needed to find Jesus Christ. And for that reason, I'm here today and able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the text says that the man was blind from his birth. So we know that he was never able to see anything. Verse 2 says, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was blind or born blind? And that's an interesting statement. Because it seemed to me that they were questioning that this man had done something wrong mm -hmm. to put himself in that situation. Well... And if he had not done anything wrong, then his parents must have did something. Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells me that all have sinned well. and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to use this metaphorically, we all are blind well. because we all have sinned. And we all have dealt with situations and circumstances in our life that may cause us to make some bad decisions. Come on now, y'all. Some of us have done some things in the dark. Well. Some of us have done some things in the midnight hour. Mm. We have went in our closet and have maybe thought some things and participated in those things that have caused us to sin. Uh, y'all know how dark this is. Well. Uh, when you turn on the light, we run like roaches <laughs> because there is something there that lets us know that we're wrong. Uh -huh. uh, I, 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 grow, I grew up in the projects, and, and, and I, I'm not ashamed to tell it. God has brought me a long way, but there were some times where when you turn on the light in the kitchen, mm -hmm. the roaches will go and flutter around. Here's the beautiful thing about it. The gospel will put you in a place where you can recognize exactly where you are. Right. And it's because of that good news that it can lead you to the place where you ought to be. Are y'all with me this morning? Uh -huh. And so we recognize that this man, yes, he was physically blind, but he was also blind spiritually. But I want you to notice verse 3, where Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. There are times in our life where we ask the question, why God? Why am I in this situation? Why do I have to deal with this problem again? Y'all kind of quiet this morning, so let me just go on and be me. Come on. The issue is that many times we ask the question, what did he or she do wrong this time again? Well, uh, Y'all know how it is when it comes time for the invitation. Someone comes down with the same problem that they've been dealing with over and over again. Uh -huh. And some of us will say, Mm. There she is again. Well, got that same problem. Mm. Right. Didn't she confess that last week? Right. Then here he comes again. I thought he got that straight now yeah. last week. Uh -huh. He's back with the same old problem. Well, but understand that people are blind. Mm -hmm. right. People have conditions, and people need time to work some things out. Right. I'm telling you that it doesn't matter where you come from in life, you still got a problem. Mm -hmm. You still sin. And you still need restoration. Well. But this man, they wanted to blame his problems on him and his parents. 
Now understand, we do become blind because of the things we get ourselves into. Amen? Amen. And we do fall short. But I want you to understand that his parents had nothing to do with this condition. It is a circumstance of life that some of us end up where we are. But your circumstance does not dictate your life. Y'all still with me? Come on. Because we all have been added to the body of Christ, we've heard the gospel. We believed it with all our heart. We repented of our sins. We confessed Christ to be the Son of God, and we was baptized for our, the remission of our sins. And we was added to the body of Christ by the Lord himself. That statement alone ought to change your circumstance right. and your situation. Here's the beauty of it. This man had nothing to do with why he was physically blind. Right. But notice verse 4. Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about it. Many times we look at our circumstance and say, woe is me. Instead of looking at it as an opportunity to praise God. Yes! I used to deal with drugs. Mm. Yes, I used to walk the street. Mm. Yes, I used to go to the club. Mm. Yes, some of y'all look at me like I really done something. <laughs> Y'all with me? Y'all done got quiet. 
Right. Right. They don't want to masquerade. They did it at the club last night. They want real Christianity. People who have gone through some things that were blind, that were beat up and downtrodden, and now they come to serve God. And they want to see a body of Christ that really demonstrates who Jesus Christ is. Think about it. I'm not going to the hospital if the hospital can't help me. I must see some evidence that what works in the hospital or what's the cure or whatever medication it is works in my life. Can I make it personal? Make it personal. He said, verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light. Have your light gone out? Is Christ still the focus in your life? Are we still moving in the light? Have we put a bushel on the light, church? Now, you say, well, what are you talking about? We are to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? But if the gospel ain't working for us, right, right, right. how would they know that it works? Right. Sisters, you don't go to the store and buy tide when tide don't clean your clothes. Right. <laughs> and brethren, you don't buy a suit. They got bleach stains all over. Right. Y'all with me? If the church works, then we are the commercial for the church. Right, right. Yeah. We demonstrate yeah. that it's powerful not only through our worship, but through our life yeah. every day. Now, here's the thing. If Christ is living in me and he's working in me, then it's demonstrated in the life that I live. And while I live this life, life, I have the light of Christ. And everywhere I go, there's a little light being shed throughout the world. And that light is the truth of God's word. Yes, sir. I can do all things through Christ. It strengthens me. So not only do am I the light, I have a powerful being that is shining through all of mankind. As long as I am in the world, he says, Christ Jesus, I am the light of the world. Now, if we've been added to the body of Christ, wouldn't we have his light? So the question is, Are you blind? Can you see? If I'm blind, then there's no light. If I can see, then I see that Jesus <laughs> is my light. So wherever I go, I live for Jesus. Wherever I go, I plan to be a soldier for Christ. Right. Whatever word I speak, right. I speak from the oracles of God's word. Amen. Everything I touch yeah. is done because I'm doing it for the master. Right. Every place I walk right. Right. is where God wants me to be. Amen. When it comes down to the end, I only want to hear this phrase. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Good and thy good and faithful yes, servant. Yes, 
That's all I want to hear. But I want you to understand that I'm just not looking for those words. Well, but I want to be there when Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. And I want him to see me coming up the road. And I want him to say, oh, God, is that you? Yes, I see you, son. You done good. That's my boy. Y'all get out the way. Here comes Omar. Get out the way, son. Here I am. I love you. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You was blind, but even though you was blind, you walked in the light. God bless you. God bless you.